Okay, my friends, this is gonna. This is exciting. Very, very exciting time. About a year ago, everybody came out. The Royal Institute, every, all of them, Fermi, and they all agree that the the um, Bohr model just doesn't work. So it says the, the a new boson that they discovered, and we did. We we discovered it actually, and I'll show you. We discovered it. It, it appeared in nuclear decay. Well, they're finding it from a decaying beryllium. They think they saw this particle. We can actually see the particle, this boson that they were looking for. We created it by using a pulsed red laser through a venturi, and then that boson that they're talking about separated from the electron shower. I'll show you that right now. In actual pictures. And what a photon looks like is that. Half of a photon is an electron. When they concuss, the dark particle, is what they call a muon, separates from the electron particle, which explodes. Exactly what they talk about, only they don't know where they came from because they're using a hundred billion particles. We're using two and seeing the exact source and the exact outcome. Okay, let's start with what light is. Light is a particle way back here in a wave. And why is there a wave out here? That's the magnetic region that that particle influences. There's no border there other than an impact zone of magnetic. You push a magnet against a magnet, you feel it compress and, and push. This is what happens, and when it does, it creates a glow. And you see these little particles? Those are nothing more than uh, electrons that are attached to like water molecules, and there are other molecules that are in the air that have to concuss as this particle wave, the particle back here, the wave in front forces its way through these particles, they concuss. Now, what about the particle itself? What is the nature of that particle? Well, here it is right here. There is the particle. You see that? And originally, back here, you can't really see it too... It's sort of funny looking. And then as it gets ready to concuss, right here, it displays itself as that particle. And that is a black and white particle, two sides. That's like a, a, a bar magnet and a bar magnet. That's why it is a photon. Photons of light are neutral. They bounce off you because they already have two electrons together. And at least, there may be four. I'm not positive yet. I always see them in this configuration. See them green and, and, and red and so forth. They're, they're not they're always exactly look the same the way. Now, sometimes there's an upspin. You see the black is up and the white is down, and this time the white is up and the black is down. There's upspin, there's downspin. Now, that I can't really account for other than the magnetism of the Earth, and they're always in that polarity pointing towards the Earth. You know, they're, well, they're always pointing in one direction, whether it's they're, the direction that they're coming in from or it's the direction the Earth is pulling them towards magnetically. I'm not certain yet. However, half of these photons, when they explode, they create electrons, and the electrons literally separate. And that I just showed you with the black and the white. Now, let's take a look at what happens as they accelerate. Here it is right here. Now, don't forget, that's the wave. Well, here's the wave. Well, what happened to the wave? The wave accelerated. Well, the particle way back in the wave pulled itself right out of the wave, like a rocket ship, because there is a venturi here. A venturi is a restriction. And what does the restri restriction do? The restriction forces all this magnetic balls, and there is a ton of them. There's not just one. They're all over the place. You can see them. They're everywhere. And they have to force their way into this slot, which is a, it's a rounded slot. It's called a venturi. And it forces them to concuss. And at that point, the black balls separated from the white ones. 
and I'll show you that again. I think we've seen it already, but this is what the showers come out. These showers look like this coming at us, and they're disks of, of light. And this is a particle that is an unknown particle. Nobody's ever seen it, and nobody ever will unless they talk to us, because it's a particle that appears to have a reverse spin, and it concussed with a normal Higgs and did that. That is not light, and it's not not light. <laughs> and this is what the the particles normally look like. When they concuss here, we saw on the box of particles like this, and then they just separate, and the black balls go away. Now, the uh, Royal Institute says, yeah, there is a problem with lepton universality, and these are what they call leptons. This is the boson part, and the white part is the fermion explosive part. They also call this electron showers and electron neutrinos, and I'm not kidding you, and they call these muons, and they call these muon neutrinos, and I'm also not kidding you, and I am going to tell you something else that they have no clue about. This is dark matter. They never knew it was attached to the electron. They still don't know it because when they look at their stuff, it's just exploded debris. And they see, oh, there's a black one, oh, there's a white one, there's an exploded, there's a nothing, but they don't know they started together. And here's what they're looking for. All right, if anybody wants any more information, roger at mudfossils with an S dot com. This is electron flood theory. The two of them together, dark matter, muon, um, boson, whatever you want to call it, is attached to the electron. We've always thought of an electron as the explosive part. It makes electricity, lightning, static, all that stuff. Well, yes, it does, but it was always attached to the muon, which is the dark matter. We never knew that. So they've been looking for the dark matter. It's part of the electron. 1837 make a proton, 1838 make a neutron, and they only stabilize, pushing and shaking and shaking and shaking, boop! If they hit about right in that range, they start to get pretty stable. And, you know, an extra electron or two here and there makes some isotopes. But there's, and then one decays from a neutron, makes it into a proton or that type of thing. Now, two of them back to back is the photon. Right? The two of them back to back is a photon. And when they concuss, they explode. Here's what they see, because they never see them until they concuss. They never see them like we saw them. This is what they see, the muon, which is here the dark particle, and it, all it does is come away with a little ball, and they see an electron neutrino, electron shower, and it explodes with what we see. But they only see it in this configuration, so they have no clue that they were ever attached together. That's the problem, and nobody will talk to me. It's been five years I've been showing this. All right, I showed you that black ball in our research, and that is what holds the particles together. And this is what they're having the most trouble with. One of the most troublesome features in the description of the strong force which holds the atomic nucleus together. Why is it held together? I could tell you why, because it's magnetic. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. No, it is not. Its protons are made up of 1837 electrons. All right, protons are made of 1,837 of these. A neutron has one extra, and that makes it neutral. Photons are bits of, of light, of, of um, electricity, of bits of electrons attached together. And I think as you get into the bigger and bigger particles, then you get damage. Light is not damaging per se, until you get real high energy light, which is gamma rays and all of that ultraviolet and up in that range where it's either spinning so fast that the mass smacks you like a, a, a drill bit. Or because these things sort of lazily go, the red and the, the green's a lot faster, and blue is real fast. And then you get into like the really X rays and gamma rays and ultraviolet and the things that do damage to other electrons. They smash electrons out of their bits and pieces of the nucleuses of things, and that's called nuclear decay. That's what they do, they cause nuclear breakdown. Now, that's their most troublesome part. This is exactly what we're showing. And this is exactly what I showed you, electron neutrino, muon neutrino. And they create the bosons. They don't realize these are together. See, they're talking about an electron and muon, which are, they sit together here. Here's the deal. If they were just sitting here together, 
you would have an electron and you would have a muon. See, an electron and a muon. If they were in concussion, you would have a, a neutrinos. That's when you get the, the, the explosive white electron shower and you get the muon, it's just a ball rolls away. Now, the tau, I'm not sure what they're really talking about there, but I do know that as they ex are separated, when they come back together, you got some energy. And this is the energy we're missing. I think there's free energy here. Okay, my friends, as you know, I do atomic nuclear research using light and seeing the actual particles, understanding that we are exploding our atmosphere, and now it has come to pass. Swirling mass of plasma, raining electrons observed above Earth for the first time. This is NBC News. When it comes to extreme weather, it's safe to say a space hurricane qualifies. You see what's happening here? You see what's going on there? This is spinning against something. It's rubbing. That's why these arms are twisting in. Every time one of these electrons smashes into another electron, it glows and it rains. Okay, my friends, I'm going to leave it this for today. We're going to go through every electronic interaction from static to lightning to sprites to excitons, which are all these new swirlons, plasma events. I'm going to show you some stuff what the Russians did in space. It all relates to electron flood theory. There's nothing but electrons. They build photons. They build protons. They build neutrons. They build um, molecules. They build everything there is. And they form, they believe, I believe they have a hole in the center of every proton. Instead of a proton being just one big chunk of positiveness, it's a bunch of electrons. And the the weak part of the electron, the gravity part, is in the center, and all of these red balls, which is the electron part, coats that attractive gluon part. We're going to get deep, very, very deep.